Chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Gutierrez, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, interesting meeting yesterday with General Kelly. 25 members of Congress, almost all of whom are descendants of immigrants who came here with nothing, whose parents came here with nothing, sat down with the Chief of Staff of the President of the United States, and he said, basically, we were the wrong kind of people in America. And that people like our parents that came here to this country really are bringing the country down. Because when he says he's for a merit-based system, he's saying he's not for my mom and my dad being able to come to this country. But interestingly enough, all of us who came to this country because of family-based immigration system wound up as being members of the U.S. House of Representatives. But he was saying, you know, I'm meeting with a group of congressmen and you really shouldn't be here because your parents really are tearing the country apart and bringing it down. That means, that's what he means when he says, I want to replace the system with a merit-based system. And that was very telling in the meeting yesterday. But, you know, we want a system um, that's family-based. That's the system the Democrats want because we believe that businesses are created by immigrants and that it's essential for their families to be united as they come to this country so that they can achieve American success and we can all achieve the American dream together. And that's exactly what they want to stop with the merit-based system. Unless, of course, they come from Norway. Then they continue to come. We hear from the party of family values and the party of Donald Trump, who even employs his children at the White House, the Trump Organization, just think about it. Here's an organization where the dad created the business, handed it down to the son. The son's not going to hand it down to his children. But they don't want immigrants to be able to do exactly the same thing and follow the same course that apparently has been so successful for the president of the United States. And here's something else we learned from the chief of staff. That when people from one party work with people from another party, that's not bipartisanship, he said. Bipartisanship defined by General Kelly in this White House is when people with completely different, opposite views of the world, they work together. So only a Senate deal between people who believe in immigration and those who don't believe in immigration and who want to end the immigration system as it is, unless you come from Norway, that's the only way it's bipartisanship. That's like saying that if a Republican and a Democrat are working together on an environmental issue, it's not bipartisanship because it's a Republican and Democrat. Unless the Democrat and the Republican are a person that believes in climate change, working together with a Republican who believes that climate change is a hoax created by the Chinese. You know what kind of legislation you get? You get nothing. You get a stalemate. You do not move the agenda forward. But that's their bipartisanship. And that's what we learned at the meeting yesterday. Look, Democrats and Republicans are working together. Senator Graham, Republican. Senator Durbin, Democrat. They put a proposal on the table, and the president rejected it. That includes, just so that we're very clear, Democrats giving up things that are unprecedented in that Senate deal that was put on the president's desk. And members of the Hispanic Caucus meeting with General Kelly can't fathom supporting the Senate deal. But guess what? That's bipartisanship. That's what it comes down to. Which brings us to the votes this week. Republicans might not need our help because you're the majority party. We're the minority party. But just in case you do need our help in getting a budget approved, I want you to know we're ready to stand to help you to keep the government open and to approve a budget. But I, what I learned from the meeting with Senator Kelly, and everybody should understand, is that Democrats are more united than ever before. If you want to help, our help, on the budget, you've got to release the 800,000 dreamers you are holding hostage. You've got to do it. Democrats aren't going to blink. We're going to stand by our values. There comes a time that if you say you stand for justice, if you have to actually stand and hold it and not back down. And that's what Democrats are going to do this week. We're not going to back down. Need our help? Release the 800,000 dreamers you would hold hostage. And guess what? We're ready to pay a handsome, 
ransom for their release. Thank you.